talk about the former readers and playmates who walk in the street. We love them down there, so they have car parties that carry the spine for two hours and stuff. Uh, we're from the old door of consulting. Um, we focus on mobile, on uh, web development, like the uh, lead useful apps, mostly in the uh, object you see with Pro Backends. So, Pro Backend these days have web services for iPhone uh, and the uh, HTML5 mobile apps. Uh, anyways, we're moving a little bit south in January. Uh, so, yeah, this is where we're located at the moment. We're moving all the way. Here. Yeah, so we have about 500 square meters of work in the center there. So if you're having a real slow, it's about three minutes from the center station and the provide pumping and the regular co-working services. So be sure to visit. Look about me and over to my speech and presentation. Yeah, again, C++ is actually my domain, if you don't like 
top you just use uh, the install apt on the environment and install the URL right there from the more issues. Uh, <coughs> yeah. So in order to, to accomplish these goals without having any more dependencies, uh, more issues has implemented a full HTTP one point one compliant stack. Uh, that's just like example, robust HTTP. Anyways, uh, it includes like transaction objects, messages to response, message requests, cookies, cookie jars, URL objects, everything, basically everything that we need to implement uh, HTTP. Uh, uh, and it has been long using test double driven development, so everything is well tested and uh, implemented the work to spec. Uh, basically, uh, all the cookie stuff and um, things are implemented based on the RFCs. Uh, or it's a, it's a pragmatic implementation. Uh, for instance, the Nginx uh, discovered uh, only provides HTTP status calls rather than status words, and so it's more useful to support that as well because it doesn't really hurt the spec compliance and it makes it more useful for real world implementations. Uh, so the next logical step once we have this framework is to have a client on top of the stack. Client supports IPv6, TLS, proxies, evil, key through optional dependencies that we have to have actually. But, uh, um, basically, uh, the modern framework is, is Lego. It's built for very useful bricks. All of the underlying core dependencies are, are, are uh, and user useful and then the can use any part of it without using the, the, the entire framework. Uh, one of the first things that I actually used which for myself was using it was for parallel requests in a catalyst project. We, we needed to uh, fetch a lot of XML from various sources and we needed to do it in parallel. We've been using MVV curls for this before and uh, it's also like LVP parallel requests. But both of these are quite ugly and um, problematic implementations. Especially curl has like a C core and then it's hard to debug if you search in trouble. Uh, basically it couldn't be easier using the catalyst now we're using the malicious file. You just set up a callback for each of the requests you want you want to, to load and the URL. Uh, and you just reply and start or process and then it, it runs all the requests and then the provider runs the callback once it gets the content. Uh, the client also supports easy form handling. Here's a simple example. We're getting a CPAN search interface and we're posting with the, the query and the hash with query parameters. Uh, so this is client post form with, 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 the, with the hash. Uh, this also shows the, the um, error handling. Stuff. You can see that the post format returns a transaction and then you check the, the, the success method on the transaction which will return our, our results and if that transaction succeeded. And then you can use the response message. Otherwise, uh, you get back message error in code. And use the that. So I showed a bit earlier, there's also quite powerful one-liner support in the framework. Uh, there's a, a package included in distribution called uh, OYO, so when you use the command line on Pro, we have like Pro minus M Ojo. Ojo. Uh, an Ojo package includes, or it exports a number of, of uh, simple methods into your, to your uh, namespace for command lines. G for jet, D for delete, for post, post with a uh, post body, cut requests, web sockets. There's even a couple of special cases there. Uh, it includes B for byte stream, which is, is a utility class that lets you do stuff with byte streams, and uh, an A method to set up a really simple uh, server. So here's a couple of examples of the use of the module. Of the module. This first one is the synopsis from, from the documentation. Uh, you can see it gets the module server page with a set of uh, query headers in a hash of runs and that optional request volume. Second example uses uh, the DOM parser and gets the title from, from the uh, malicious uh, homepage and uh, prints that out. 
So here's another one that's great, Bluebird, and gets all the story links. Uh, and prints that. And on Blue Scraper for Blink. Uh, you can see, basically, it's, it's a full uh, uh, XML, liberal XML parser there. There's also a couple of uh, uh, undocumented cloud functions. Mojo is supposed to be optimized for fun, so uh, you can use the little old big old there to do it as an alias for the forget method, and the uh, big old little old uh, as uh, an alias for byte stream method. Uh, to write code based computer software. Anyways, uh, Mojo DOM uh, is a liberal XML parser. Uh, it needs to come, it basically, it can parse most HTML pages out there. Just like uh, you can kind of think of it as jQuery for the server side. Uh, supports all CSS tree selectors that make sense on the server side. Stuff like who over and, and, and things aren't supported support. because it's kind of hard to do on the server side. Uh, but uh, anything like uh, star element where foo equals bar, element check elements, empty elements, empty child, first of type, all that stuff is implemented. Uh, However, uh, it's eventually it optimized for fun. But really, if you, if you need to do like hardware XML processing, use Blink XML instead. Uh, if you need to like do some quick scraping or, or some processing, this is an excellent flat. Uh, or if you need to consume a simple XML web service that your performance is simple. Uh, yeah. So if you want to demo what uh, the framework is doing, there's an environment variable for that. Uh, more client debug, kind of like the guy trace with all the all requests that your application is doing and the responses that you get back. Uh, there's also a bunch of other environment variables supported by framework. You can check out the 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 guide, the short guide, I think, for for a overview of all the <coughs> supported environment variables. There's like a um, certain module server debug one and uh, uh, some that support IPv6 and DLS and stuff like that. Uh, you can also do like kind of exotic stuff, like if you need to have a streaming or uh, response, uh, you build a transaction using the clients here, and then you set the body of the response to print, and then you get back something. So then you can like run the request, and while it's getting while it's getting back uh, data, it will, will create the call the server after there, and you can set the body and then uh, do stuff with the response body. You can also even do like a custom socket by setting the transaction sockets before you start on the client. Yeah, so a big response will is just work to go back to determine uh, a water 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 mark where you need to like uh, start storing it into the temporary file system so that it won't like use up all the memory if you get a really good desktop. Uh, yeah, and there's also a built in JSON parser, so if you need to consume, for instance, you can get back to the data structure based on doing the JSON responses. Uh, you can also uh, use some of the CPAN based uh, JSON parsers if you if the build it on and doesn't suit you. There's a Mobis Mobis JSON uh, counter. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's full web support. So I don't know what, how much you know about web support. Basically, it's, it's a part of the HTML5 spec and it's protocol for uh, opening something that over HTTP. So, uh, Moyo is actually the first pro framework that I've support. Uh, you see a simple server example here where it sets up a uh, web socket on the root and, and uh, whenever it receives a message, it gets a call back here, which includes a message. And you can send a message back to that way and build up conversations. For instance, you can do like a sequence which is called the first message I got, the second message I got, and so on. For a lot of examples using the Mojo framework and the web sockets, you can check out BDI's GitHub account. He has uh, like a DNC client in the web sockets, a uh, uh, slideshow presentation thing, an IRC client. It's lots of cool things that are that you can play with and play with the flags. Uh, it supports some. Uh, Version 76 of the spec, the latest one. Uh, there's still some controversy about um, WebSockets. 
Uh, but you can also use the use client to test your websites. So even if you use different implementation. And, and the client <coughs> server uses callbacks to, to handle uh, responses on message. So whenever you get back, if you put callback, whenever I get back a message, I should do this or that. And then you can just like start off the client by sending the first message. Um, yeah. So Google has been involved in the terms of everything, and, and we're not quite sure what's going to pan out yet. Uh, and there's still some browsers that don't support it, including the decoder. So what we need to do right now to get good support is to use a, a flash callback, which basically you, you, you use WebSocket whenever it's natively implemented in your browser, or otherwise it falls back to like a, a flash implementation of WebSockets. Uh, Anyways, the framework will need to click down the server thingy, and that actually moves things too. There's the light app that I just showed you, which we'll look at first. Let's just generate a simple light application. So you use the mojo command for all of your gener generation needs as well as running games and stuff. Generate light app will say, oh, uh, we create a tiny VS file and make it uh, runnable. So let's look quickly at the component of that file. This is basically a, a really simple uh, example of a malicious app. This gets the, the first line there, it, gets, it handles the uh, rest of the root, and it just says, the uh, other rest of the root, just that it can get handled by the uh, index template. Uh, and the rendering system picks up on that, so we'll look at the templates on the next page, and the other one says, I want to handle that thing with the one placeholder. Uh, there's several kinds of placeholders. You can have more weighty placeholders that include the slash or just like uh, uh, single placeholders. Uh, and basically, it says render this text back. So, the last thing there is start application. So, it depends on which theme you use to start it with. You can do fast CGI, CGI even because start costs are quite well on this framework. So, you can easily deploy to, to uh, share hosting, for instance. Uh, yeah. So here's the template example. This uses the built-in template system of uh, uh, the malicious system. Uh, so the indexation of template says use the function AO and just render the app image. And the, just so there is, uh, you can see the app that sign in, in, in support inline files. You can also easily extract all of these inline files out into files of the application. There's also there's actually a whole generation tool that looks to use it and extracts all of the files. Kind of like an auto action in, in uh, the catalyst framework. 
Let me just do a little initiation example and basically use it for whatever you need. Uh, well, so, if you want to generate a full MoYo application rather than, than uh, the light one, you use Flow to generate app timing. Uh, app and stuff like that. And here it, it, it uh, creates uh, the script file, creates uh, uh, the, the main application, timing as 2 pm uh, example controller, a uh, simple unit test, as well as it creates a public record where it serves the, the indexational file. It also creates some, some sample templates for not file and exemption handling, and an example layout. So yeah, as we thought all the configuration um, schema things to describe. So we define routes in, in the full framework rather than having exported the Jeff and get them delete methods. You do use the R object, which is root the root object. So here's an example that roots root to control the food action bar. You also use placeholders in that. Uh, we can say like the root controller to uh, the controller list with the action view. And include the ID there. So anything that's included will be automatically moved to the slash so that you can have access in your action. Uh, you can also provide fallbacks for, for your uh, uh, or defaults for, for uh, your placeholder so that if you don't include ID, you fall back to a bottom in this example. And the same thing we did with ladders in, in uh, the live application. You can use a bridge which will be automatically put in between uh, the action of one dispatch to another. There's also a, there's actually a Python guide to go to the root system included in the simulation distribution so for each of the different more chats there. <coughs> yeah, so the Moyo template system, uh, we already looked at it. It's really simple. You know, if you start line with a percent and it parses it well. If you include that equals, it will print it, or if you use two equals, it will print it without the statement. Basically, the default is to escape so that uh, you are going to side script in the nice. So, uh, you also have like the inline style, which is the most popular, it's similar to Mason or PHP. Uh, and you can include comments like that. So, there's the EP, which is the one that people want to use, and you have like a lightweight version of EPL, which you can use, for instance, for call generation or whatever. Actually, as well. Most framework itself uses to generate code. Uh, of course, if you're like me, you might want to use the TP when you were uh, There's also a simple plugin that will use TP uh, Or there's a Mason render, XLP, XLA, CPPP, YAML. Uh, Mojo system also explores a bunch of default helpers that you can use in both main templates and controllers. And uh, the update dumper. Access the current stash, stash, you can change the layouts, you can set the uh, includes, and uh, the response contact. All of these things are available throughout the system. There's also a simple URL for the handler which you can uh, uh, use to, to link back to your routes. So basically, any route can have a name, and you just provide uh, use that name with the, the other parameters you require for your. So, the rendering system. Basically, the rendering system can either take a template and it will automatically use my detection to find uh, HTML templates based on what files exist in your file system. So, if you provide the .tp file, it will use the tp renderer, or the .tp file, it will use the tp renderer, or, and so on and so on. Or you can just render straight text, or if you provide the data structure to render JSON, or you use render JSON, <coughs> it will. Uh, Render uh, your response to the database and set the status and so on. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so there's also a plugin system. And the plugin system is hook based. We have like a set of different hooks that you can connect to rather than overloading uh, uh, with the uh, with inheritance. The plugin system says, I want to do something, run something off the dispatch and it will run all those actions in, in, in uh, um, order. That's also the appropriate that add, add pipes and, and uh, renders and custom root extensions. So, uh, as I said, it's all built up in Lego, so there's some sample plugins included, like the Aiden condition, which 
out to the Bruce dispatcher, so that we can uh, dispatch to different routes based on which use region you are. So you can uh, do like private of three Fridays for those things and uh, uh, like that. There's a default charge plugin, which defaults to Unicode for the whole knowledge framework. Uh, all those helpers are solely are part of the default helpers uh, plugin. Uh, and the EP render and the EPL render sets up rendering using those different templates and things. So basically, uh, the EP render is built in exactly the same way as, as the built in uh, render plugins. Uh, you can do something like a header condition if, if, if this header plugin is set dispatched to that, otherwise dispatched to that. Uh, and, uh, JSON config is a simple config loader which loads your configuration based on, on uh, uh, the JSON structure in, in the app folder directory. It actually, uh, I, I provided a patch to that plugin so that we can load different config based on, on uh, the run by a mode. So you can have like a basic configuration and then you can have like, a production configuration and development configuration. And especially based on which mode you start the application, it will uh, override given settings. So, for instance, if you have like a test kit database, you can have a test mode and then uh, load that config as well. There's also a simple pop render and uh, Cover by which just adds, adds no issue support by it um, to the response body. And a request timer to, to show. Uh, request timer. So, yeah, PSGI support without the box. I guess most of you have seen Black, and, uh, and uh, if you want to use Black, it just has no problem at all. Uh, you can use all sorts of stuff like middleware the same way you can do it with dance or frameworks. Uh, there's also a new, uh, since the latest version, uh, deployment option called Hypnoto, which is a production standard ready sound on server. Uh, it's partial deployment using unique signals. You can set the work request, the bit file, and all that stuff. It's, uh, it includes uh, 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 reverse proxy circuit support and stuff like that. Uh, and you can run long running process. Stuff that's really a problem if you're using CGI or fast CGI deployment, you can't really support long running processes. Uh, so basically, you use the generate system to create a config file, and you get something like this. It's the basic config file, it's specifies what to listen and how many words to start with by default. If you want to do the tweak configuration, it uh, takes a look at all the parameters. Uh, and to control the server, you, you can use the Unix signal to send the uh, in per turn, shut down the server, quick, shut down the I guess most of you know how to use uh, single sort, to use the kill of the single. You can increase the crazy server pool or decrease the server pool. Uh, and the user through single will actually start a new demon and then uh, start redirecting the request to that new demon and then shut down the old one. So that you, can, you can do uh, the reloading of the code or the new code without having any load at all. You can even uh, upgrade your code to a new version on a running application without having load time. Um, you can also control each of the individual workers and send them signals and they will just shut down to work the same as when using the degrees in the workflow. So for more information on that, I suggest looking at the Moyo server documentation. Uh, I think it might have just five minutes. So. <laughs> uh, the community. Mostly the community of Moonish is favorite based around the IRC channel. Uh, Moonish is quite big in Russia, sometimes it feels like 60% of the IRC channel is Russian. Or, 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 or. Uh, and a lot of the early Moonish presentations that were held uh, were in the Russian Yapsi or the early ones. Uh, scrolling in Japan, there's like a, a Twitter repeat bot in the RC channel that we never want to tweet something about malicious uh, in the RC channel. And later there has been a lot of stuff I can read like this. So uh, it seems there's a huge problem in Japan and uh, some of them have started to play with the malicious framework. Uh, 
again, the uh, framework is optimized for phone, so every file of the distribution has the same instance of the programmer call. <coughs> if you suppose to provide a new uh, feature or push for the, the required thing to a new call, that's not already new somewhere. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, the framework is built around test driven uh, development. So preferred way to apply the report is, is a failing test. And the uh, uh, guarantees to fix, to fix it if you provide the, if the, the failure. Uh, it's a uh, proof on the map, probably apocalyptic. So sometimes people report bugs or dark bugs. Get those good. Yeah. So the current release is <laughs> expected to be the, the release candidate. So we're actually, when I'm saying Christmas, I actually mean this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.